Man, it was sure nice of Nintendo to invite me here for a theme park day. <laughs> Is that Mario? Wow, it's Mario, man. <laughs> Eat a bit too much spaghetti, bud? Attention all park attendees, Donkey Kong is going fucking bananas and is mowing down children as we speak. Please find the nearest safe zone to your current position and wait there until further notice. I repeat, Donkey Kong is- <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's basically everything that happened and now we're here. Yeah, I know, I was there. Who were- who are you talking to? Ah, it doesn't matter. Hey, you wanna hear a question that no one's ever said yes to? What? <laughs> wanna play the Wii U? The Wii U. The Wii's weird step cousin and the Switch's little brother. The Wii U is this very weird middle ground between a home console and a portable one. It wasn't quite willing to go full on portable like the Switch, but also it didn't do enough to differentiate itself from the Wii, leaving it just kind of exist. But what really caused this problem? Why did the Wii U fail so badly? Well, simply, it was the gamepad. While having a second screen sounds really cool and has a lot of potential, that's really all it was. Potential. No one ever did a lot with it. It was a lot like the DS, actually. The second screen was so cool and seemed like it was going to be this huge thing, but most developers just looked at it and went, MAP! But there were a few games that used the gamepad to its full potential, and one of those games that comes to mind when I think about it is Nintendo Land. And if I'm going to be stuck in the safe zone until further notice, at least I can preoccupy myself. So, Nintendo Land opens up by showing all the playable games, but before that, let's look around the park. Yeah, you can use the Wii U gamepad to actually look around the park. I personally have a bunch of cool trophies and stuff, so mine's a lot busier than it would be when you first start, but the idea is just so cool. Anyways, let's get on to the games. There are 12 games in all, 6 of which are multiplayer. The multiplayer games have been split up between team games and versus games, and this all comes together to make a very well-designed and organized home screen. Okay, so we're going to start off with The Legend of Zelda Battle Quest. So in this game, the player on the gamepad uses a bow to attack enemies, while the other player uses swords and shields. The goal is to push through the level and kill every enemy. At the end of the level is a small boss fight, and then you get your score. This game is awesome. Using the gamepad to look around and shoot arrows is really cool and works just as you expect. Then using the Wiimote to swing your sword is just as good. It actually takes the same sword mechanics from Skyward Sword, but I'm not complaining about that. The game itself is just fun. You're auto move, so you never have to worry about positioning or anything like that. You share health with the other players, but you can find it through breaking pots or, or shooting different secrets and things like that. And the boss battles are really, really well designed and very creative. The game basically plays like an arcade version of regular Zelda, but that's why it's so much fun. And a lot of games actually play like that in this game. The next attraction is Pikmin Adventure, and oh my god, this one's so good. One player is Olimar, and the others play as Pikmin, and it really plays how you expect. Olimar can press spots on the gamepad to throw Pikmin, can call the Pikmin back to them, which will also call the other players, throw the Pikmin again, it it's just Pikmin, really. Pikmin players can hit enemies with their head and jump onto them to get better hits. You go through the levels fighting enemies and breaking blocks to get to a boss and escape. Once again, it's just a very arcade version of Pikmin. There's also a versus mode. It plays basically exactly the same as the regular game, except now you are fighting against each other. The main goal is collecting all the candy you can, which you get from beating enemies or hitting each other and making the other player drop their candy. It's a lot of fun and reminds me almost of like a Mario Party type minigame. The last of the team games is Metroid Blast. The first game mode is a wave style game where one player is flying in a ship and the other is on the ground. The ship plays about as you would expect, you use the sticks to move and turn, trigger to shoot, and you can use the gamepad's gyro to look around as well. Then the ground player plays like Metroid Prime on the Wii. Like, exactly the same. I really enjoyed this game mode, but some people might not. The play style when you're on the ground is very weird and hard to get used to. Like I said, it's exactly like Metroid Prime, which some people hated. And at the end of the day, it is a shooter, and some people just don't like shooters. There's also a versus mode, it plays exactly the same, except now the person in the air and the person on the ground are fighting. And they even added a ground versus ground mode, which is really cool, but I didn't get the chance to play it because I don't have two Wiimotes with me. This is CNN Breaking News. Breaking news, the Pentagon has decided to release a SWAT team into Nintendo Land to try to clear it of this big monkey issue. It... Correction, SWAT team has been wiped out by big monkey at Nintendo Land. More about this as we hear. 
Shit, man. That's fucked up. Hey, you guys want a hot dog? Where'd you get those? Dude, I totally totally yeah. grabbed like 20 before I came in here. People are dying. Okay, on to the competitive games. First off is Mario Chase. In this one, the gamepad player takes place of Mario while the other players are Toads. The goal is for the Toads to catch the Marios within two minutes, but Mario gets a 10 second head start and the races are off. It's kinda just tag, but oh my god is it fun. When you get a couple people together, you can play this for hours. Then we have probably the best attraction in this game, Luigi's Ghost Mansion. One player is a ghost, the rest, ghost hunters. Each hunter has a flashlight. When you shine the light on the ghost, it takes damage. Once its health reaches zero, you win. All the while, the ghost is trying to scare each of the hunters. It's a very arcade version of Luigi's Mansion, even more arcadey than freaking Luigi's Mansion 2, but it's so much fun. Either this or Mario Chase has the highest amount of time played on Nintendo Land for my family. Those two we played all the time, with Metroid Blast really close because me and my brother played that one a lot. We loved it. Finally, we have Animal Crossing Sweet Day. The player on the gamepad controls two guards. One is controlled with the left stick and trigger, the other with the right. The goal is to catch the other players while they are trying to collect candy and put it into these little drop-off spots. That's really all it is, but it's so much fun. Uh, the Pentagon have released an official statement. Um, sorry guys, we tried. But the monkey was too big. God help you all. Okay, uh, so let's just run through the last few because I don't know how much more time I have. Yoshi's Fruit Card! The goal is to collect all the fruit and then get into a door before you run out of gas. You do this by drawing a line on the gamepad. However, you can't see the fruit on the gamepad, so you have to use both the TV and the gamepad to try and collect all the fruit. Octopus Dance. It's based loosely off of Game & Watch, actually. You have to match the dance moves of the little wood guy. That's basically it. It's pretty cool. Donkey Kong's Crash Course. You control a small rolly thing, um, and you have to go through a course without breaking your skull open. Takamura's Ninja Castle. You throw ninja stars at enemy ninjas and fight bosses, all using the gamepad to do it. Captain Falcon's Twister Race. It's a timed race where you control the cart with the gamepad. Balloon Trip Breeze. It's honestly just a balloon fight remake, but like, you use the stylus? 10 out of 10. Best one on here. So, that's really everything this game has to offer. And it really does live up to my memories. I'm really happy about that. It's just as good as I remember it being. He's getting pretty close. It blinds you, and it's way better when you remember it, but when you play it, it's just kind of poopy garbage, and it really sucks. Because I, I don't know what I'd dump myself if it wasn't as good as like I remember it being. But it really is. It's a great game. If you have a Wii U and you don't have this somehow, play it. And if you don't have a Wii U, uh, but you want to try it out, I mean, go ahead. We use a pretty cheap nowadays. HOLY SHIT! The President Donald Trump has decided to nuke Nintendo Land using the nuclear codes 6, 5, 1, 2... <clears throat> I was not supposed to say those. More about this at 9. Hey everyone, I found something. <laughs>